Everybody knows what's going on here. It's a spoiler talk. Now, this review will contain spoilers, so uh, it's been like two or three weeks have passed. If you haven't seen the movie, then then why haven't you? I mean, you had time. You had two to three weeks to to watch this movie, you know? Take a date or, you know, take, a, take your dog. And by watching this film, I noticed there's some things that was quite different with this film. Like, the film didn't start off with, a, with an iconic episode crawl. Also, the score was kind of different. It, it felt like it felt like a lower level of the John Williams iconic Star Wars score, but more of a score you hear like at the supermarket. Now, since so now Credit, you know, he came to the planet. He wants him. He wants uh, Gene Erso's father to join the join the dark side. Well, take not join the dark side, but yeah, just join the Empire to build a space station to destroy the galaxy. And then you know, then the shade shows Gene Erso. She's trying to escape in this vault. Because these stormtroopers are trying to raid in, trying to kill her. And then she gets saved by Forrest Whitaker. Well, she didn't really get saved by Forrest Whitaker. She just was, she was discovered by Forrest Whitaker. I saw Guerrero, I mean, I wanted, I, I kind of had a problem with him a little bit. I mean, I mean, uh, there are some scenes that was kind of cut, there are some scenes with him in it that was kind of cut, that was kind of cut out of this movie. Like in the trailer, he said, what kind of bad thing you going to become? And then, but that wasn't in the in the original cut of the movie. And then he was bald for like the first, for like when he first showed up. And then he had a whole bunch of hair in the second half. And I really couldn't buy his voice. His boy like a, his voice was kind of like a high pitched Mike Tyson type of voice. <laughs> And then there was this tentacle scene where they had this giant squid trying to wrap his tentacles inside of his asshole. I, that, I don't understand what was this, the squid or octopus there for just for they can wrap him up and read his mind to see if he's telling the truth. That scene was very unnecessary. And I noticed these reshoots when I was watching this film where they went to a scene, the scene that just didn't make sense, especially for the first first half of this, of this movie. I, I liked how they showed the rebels in the, in the more, like, I'll, I don't give a, I don't give a fuck, I'm going to shoot you in your back because you are slowing me down kind of way. <laughs> we, we, in, the, in the original trilogy, they showed the Rebels as being good guys, as being the people that's dare for justice. In this movie, they showed them as in, you know, every man for themselves. You know, they, one of the members of the, of the Rebels, he shot a man behind his back because his arm was injured. Oh man, that, that I, I really like that. That was a different. That was a different take of the imp of the rebels, and it showed up, and it showed that when, it, when it's in dark times, there will be some dark measures. Diego Luna, who plays Cassian, I mean, I wanted him to have an origin, an origin story, but yet they hinted his origin story when he yelled out and said, "Oh, I've been doing this since I was a youngling," and I just kind of wanted him to have more to it than that. But then they went to Yavin 4. Yavin 4, everyone was applauding when it, when when they showed Yavin 4. And in it, shot some a familiar face. Bail Organa showed up along with R2-D2 and C-3PO. They both made an appearance. Also, there's other cameos that appeared in here. Like, I have... I have a death sentence in the Six Systems guy showed up. Um... Really, the cameos was just perfect, and it didn't, and it didn't really overbear the, the cameos. It did it just right. Just really in general, I just want to talk about the Death Star. I mean, the Death Star, the Death Star was dumbed down a little bit, and and I'm kind of and I understand why because the Death Star didn't really show its full power until Episode Four. So if you showing this full power in Rogue One, it kind of takes away from the iconic moment of, of destroying Otteron. So, in this movie, the Death Star only destroyed cities. It didn't destroy planets, but it destroyed, like, certain parts of cities that's located in the planet. Now I want to talk about CGI, Grand Moff Talkin. I first saw Grand Moff Talkin in, in Rogue One. I was watching this film like, oh my god, that's Grand Moff Talkin. CGI. 
I think they did a good job of Grim of Tarkin. I mean, there is some controversial controversy revolving adding him because the actor Peter Cushing passed away, and his family didn't want him to show up as a CGI character. So I, I, I uh, uh, that's not another whole other story, I guess. The thing I want to talk about that really hit me in the heart: Jean Erso saw the hologram of her father. And regarding to him dealing with all the pain and all the being tortured by the by the Empire to be forced to build this weapon, and then they then he created this felt safe. He put this small hole that's the size of a rump rat, and you can def you can fire two photons within that hole and destroys a whole Death Star and destroys it and blows it up. And that kind of and that right there is a is an added layer to to the already plausible flaw that Star Wars fans has been dealing with for almost 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 40 years but now I feel like since that convenient moment of, of having him creating a failsafe for the Death Star and that negates all the Death Star jokes from that we have heard and stressed for the past 40 years also I want to talk about this the the, the the ending the ending the very the third the climax and was when everyone died yes everyone in this movie was killed and I was expecting for them to die so when they actually died I didn't feel anything what a heartless person I mean, what else can I say? I mean, they did a poor job developing his character, so therefore I couldn't really get into none of the characters where they actually were felt. And I didn't really know their names. I mean, they died, then they died. They got shot up and blown up and dead. They're dead. It's the only way to complete the series. Pretty much everyone died, and then it got to the final shot. The final shot where Darth Vader had this ultimate scene literally he was he came in he was all dark and it was he came in with his lightsaber red lightsaber and there you can literally see the fear of all the rebels like all the rebels just scared for their lives they was running away it was like uh, running slaw slaw skin sliced up the bits and he was like and then he grabbed him up Force choked him to death, and then he grabbed him. He put a guy up in the ceiling, slicing, deflecting energy beams, and then he got his blade and sliced the dude that was up on the roof and up, up who was up on the ceiling. And man, that was such. Now the rebels are running away and trying to give the Death Star plans to the, you know, give the to hide the Death Star plans for their life. You know, he is coming in, slaying everybody, and nothing's working. So now the, the rebels ran away, and one rebel ran away, and then he passed the Death Star plans, and then they, and then he un unhooked the ship, which was a Tanta Five. But then one of the rebels gave the Death Star plans. To Princess Leia, and Princess Leia was once again a CGI character. I mean, it wasn't much of a bad thing, but I think I won't mind having a, a real actress to play Carrie Fisher's character Le Leia. But it, it's not a bad thing, I guess. But the CGI will be noticeable bad in once years to come. So I gotta tell you, but this movie was the ending of this movie literally in, ended ten minutes before Episode Four, and it was very perfect and and it fits really well and i almost love this movie and the f main flaws with this movie was the poor characterization with his characters and the directional style would had when it cuts from scene to scene and very much the cgi between his two characters and other than that the movie was very good and I really enjoyable and I really enjoyed it. So, alright guys, if there's anything I missed, please comment section on the board and let me know what I missed and tell me what are your favorite scenes and what are your favorite moments in Star Wars. Alright guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned because I'm going to drop my top 10 best movies of 2016. And I just finished my list. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Check out my review for Incarnates. Thank you for watching. If you like everything you see and you agree, join me and the Batman family. I'll have more Batman-tastic reviews in a way. You have been warned. Till then, ciao.